All right, good, you're good. Okay, so this this is my cello, right? And the first thing you need to do is tune the cello. And if you've uh, if you've played a guitar, you know that you can use the overtones on the guitar in o in order to tune it. You do something similar with the cello where you just put a finger onto the string, yeah? So you, you can play an open string or you put a finger in the middle and then that stops the vibration right at the center of the, of the string. And when you do that, you get an overtone. So it's an octave above the fundamental, right? And then you would like to tune the instrument with itself. And so, you know, there's different strings. And then we can use the lowest string to tune the next lowest string by selecting a different harmonic. So, so I put my finger in a different, a different place there, right? And then I can hit the same harmonic on the other string and see if it's in tune. And right now it's out of tune just a little bit, but it, it's okay, right? We could go to even higher harmonics. Right, so you see there's a whole series of notes there from, from the bottom up to the top. Now, do, do, do. What's going on there? There are two fixed endpoints to the string. Ah, this should be the bottom of the paper, right? The string is vibrating like this, and it's a standing wave, so it's going back and forth between that state and this state and then what we do is put a finger in the middle and this is a node or a knidepunkt that we put into the middle and then the wave just goes like this and then the other state of this is just going like that, right? So it's going back and forth. And then we hear the higher note. And then you can move your finger even further. And then you're adding even another node into it. And you get something like this. And you can do that again. Doot, 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 doot. And you get something. And so musicians will know about something called the harmonic series where you're going through all of these notes in a sequence. You might have a frequency. You could have twice the frequency. Uh, then you are going to three times the frequency. You're a fifth above when you go into this frequency, right? So there, there's a whole sequence of notes. And one thing you can notice is that, you know, that's true if you've got a string instrument like a violin or a cello or something, but it's not true of a drum. And so, you know, we, we have this guy, if you hit it in the center, it's different from the end. And it doesn't sound harmonic the way that the, that the string instrument does. The string instrument, all of these line up in a chord and, and it's very nice and harmonic and everything. It's not true of the drum. 
If you hit the bongo drum in the center, it's a very deep sound. If you hit it near the edge, it's a much higher sound, right? So we can go over here again. And what's going on with that? Well, you might have a drum head that is all moving up at the same time. Or the drum head could be moving down. The whole thing is collapsing and going up and down like that. Or it turns out that there's a vibration where one side of the drum head can be going up while the other side is going down, right? So it's doing something like this. And it could also happen that there's a donut mode. And so maybe the very center of the drum is moving up a little bit further out, it's moving down. You could combine these and you could have something like this, right? Where this is plus, this is minus. And so now, instead of having a Kanita Punkt, I hope I spell that right, we have a Kanita Linea, right? So it's a, it's a nodal line that's dividing up the wave, yeah? So now we're gonna do something crazy. We've thought about a one-dimensional musical instrument, right? And we have wave functions that are looking like this. That was the cello. We could have a two-dimensional musical instrument. This was the drum head. The whole drum head could be moving up or we could have a nodal line, right? or we could have a combination of these, plus, minus, plus, minus, right? Going something like this. So I want you to think what would happen if you had a three-dimensional musical instrument, right? And it's, it's a bit of science fiction, you know, to think about what this is, but we can make an analogy between these. So here, you had one dimension, it was a string. Here you had a circle, it was a surface. What would that be in three dimensions? Here you had a nodal point. Here you had a nodal line, right? Here you're going to have a surface that divides the different parts of the wave. And so if we, if we go from this 1D to a circle, you might think that you end up with a sphere over here, right? Something like this, something round, a nice sphere. And then you ask, what is the, the dividing surface when we go to the excited state? Well, maybe it's just a plane, right? So we... Just have a plane, something like this. And that's going to divide part of the wave from the other part. Yeah. Have you seen that before? Have you seen it before? You might have a dividing surface that is a cone. And then you could have part of the wave here and part of the wave in lobes like this, right? And I, I think you see the analogy here. We have S, we have P, we have D. These functions are called the spherical harmonics. And that is part of what we're going to show you in this class is uh, how do you generate these waves, the spherical harmonics. We'll find similar mathematical functions 
uh, not atomic orbitals, but molecular orbitals. And by solving the wave equations, you can understand the atomic orbitals and the molecular orbitals. Yeah, so that's the whole idea of the class is to talk about uh, where electrons are in atoms and molecules. And then we need to use atomic orbitals, molecular orbitals, wave functions, all of these things. So that means we have to introduce uh, some mathematical formalisms in order to do the quantum mechanics. And that's, that's basically what Kurt is going to do in the lectures on Friday and going a couple of weeks forward. And then I'll jump back in and we'll see uh, how we extend these ideas and how we use them in uh, things like lasers and uh, electron storage devices and a lot of the different applications. So I will say thank you to everyone for today and looking forward to, to a very nice session of Kemi Bin with everyone. So goodbye. Thank you for today. <laughs>